Hi, welcome to another video in my series on solving inequalities which contain fractions. And in those fractions, the denominator is a function of x. Now, there's various methods, as I've uh, been pointing out in other videos in this series, of solving these types of inequalities. And we have graphical methods and we have analytical methods. And what I'm going to show you here is one method of solving it graphically. And what we do for this method is we multiply both sides by a positive number to get rid of the fractions here. We can't just get rid of x and x minus 8 by multiplying by x and x minus 8 because these fractions could be negative depending on what x is. What we have to do to get rid of them is to multiply by the squares of these fractions here. So in other words, I'm going to multiply both sides by x squared and x minus 8 all squared. Both these will be positive values. And that means that I don't have the problem of multiplying by a negative number and knowing whether this inequality sign is reversed. So we multiply the left hand side, that would be 3 minus x over x minus 8. We multiply that then with x squared and x minus 8 all squared. And that would be greater than or equal to and we multiply the other side, the 1 over x, with x squared, x minus 8, all squared. So we we'll just put that 1 over x in here. Now what we need to do is just clean this up. And you can see that the x minus 8 here cancels into one of those up here. And the x here cancels with the x squared, leaving us with x. So when we tidy this up, what we need to do is just expand the brackets here. We've got x squared multiplied by x minus 8 times 3 minus 8x. And if you multiply this out, you'll find that you get 11x minus x squared minus 24. And that's going to be greater than or equal to, and then we've got this x, being multiplied by x minus 8 all squared, which is going to be x squared minus 16x plus 64. Now we'll multiply out the remaining brackets. And for this one here, we're going to get 11x cubed minus x to the power 4 minus 24x squared. And that's going to be greater than or equal to, and here we're going to have x cubed minus 16x squared plus 64x. And then we need to rearrange this so that we get 0 on one side. It's up to you which side you take the terms, but I've got a negative x to the 4 here, so I'm going to subtract 11x cubed, add x to the power 4, and add 24x squared to both sides. So therefore, what I get is 0 is greater than or equal to x to the power 4 minus 10x cubed plus 8x squared, and then plus 64x. Now each of these terms contains a factor of x, a common factor of x, so we'll pull that out. And we'll change the inequality around as well. We'll write this expression on the left hand side. So we've got x bracket, x cubed, minus 10x squared, and then plus 8x, and then plus 64. And that's going to be less than or equal to 0. Now, I've got to factorize this cubic factor here. Now, I've got to guess a value of x that's going to make this come to 0. And if you check it out, you'll see that x equals minus 2, when substituted into here, make it 0. So that means that x plus 2 must be a factor. So we've got x then multiplied by x plus 2. Right? And then 
we need to find out what the quadratic factor is going to be. And I can get that quadratic factor either by guessing or I could do algebraic long division. I'll do algebraic long division. You can do the guesswork one if you wish, okay? But it'll be x plus 2 into this expression, x cubed minus 10x squared plus 8x and then plus 64. So in the usual way, if I divide this in, that's going to be x squared. x squared times x plus 2 is going to give me x cubed plus 2x squared. I'm going to subtract to work out what the remainder is. So minus 10x squared minus another 2x squared is minus 12x squared. Bring down the next digit, or in this case, the plus 8x. I've got to multiply now by minus 12x. That's going to give me minus 12x squared and then minus 24x. Subtract these two from one another and what does that leave me with? It leaves me with 8x plus 24x. That's going to be 32x. Then bring down the plus 64 and then what do I have to multiply this by? Well, it'll have to be plus 32. And so I'm going to get 32x and then plus 64. Subtract that away again and you can see it leaves me with 0. So I now know that that quadratic factor must have been x squared minus 12x plus 32. Alright, so we've got that far and that's less than or equal to 0. Now this quadratic factor will also factorise again. So we're going to have x, x plus 2 there. And then for this quadratic factor, that's going to go to two brackets then. x and x and then less than or equal to 0. What's it going to be? Two numbers that multiply to 32. And then we've got to get that minus 12. It's going to be minus 8 and minus 4. And that checks out, yep, that checks out to give us x squared minus 12x plus 32. So what are the critical values going to be? The values that make all of these factors um, zero. So those critical values, let's just put them in, critical values. So x could be zero. It could be minus two. It could be 8 or it could be 4. Okay, so we've got our critical values there. Now what I need to do now is just sketch a graph of the function here. x bracket x plus 2, x minus 8, x minus 4. If I sketch that graph, it's going to look something like this. Let's just put our axes on x-axis, y-axis. Our critical values will be where the graph would cross the x-axis or there'll be a change in sign anyway. And so we've got minus 2, pop that in there, 0. Uh, we've got 4 and 8, so we have 4 there. It's not drawn to scale, but just hopefully give you an idea. So if we're drawing this, the graph of what we've got here on the left hand side, we can see that it's a positive quartic equation. It's up here essentially, okay? Now a positive quartic is kind of like W type shape. So we know it's going to cross then at these points. So the W shape is going to look something like this, coming down through the minus 2, up through the origin here, down through the 4 and then back out through the 8. So you've got something like that. Now, what are we looking for? We're looking for where this graph, the graph that I've drawn, is less than or equal to 0. In other words, below the x-axis. So from the graph, it looks like, okay, let's just put from the graph, where is the graph below the x-axis? Well, it's below the x-axis for values of x that are between minus 2 and 0. 
or you can see it's between 4 and 8. So x is between 4 and 8. Now you've got to be very careful in these questions, as I've mentioned before, because what sometimes happens is that in the question they don't tell us the values of x that this is not valid for. And it's not valid for values when we have to divide by 0. So you can see that we can't divide by 0 if x is 0. So x cannot equal 0. And for this one, x minus 8 can't equal 0. So in other words, x cannot equal 8. So we've got to be careful then when it comes to writing out our solutions because this is not quite what it is. x can be greater than minus 2, but because we're dealing with an inequality that's got an equals here as well, it can actually equal minus 2 because we won't end up dividing by 0. But we certainly can't have equals 0 here because it's not a valid value for x. So that's that inequality. For this one we're allowed to have 4 so we can have x is greater than or equal to 4 but we're not allowed to have x equaling 8 so we have to leave the equals 1 off this inequality. So there you go there's our solution. There's one way that we can do it that involves sketching this graph. Now I'll show you another way that we could do it graphically, but that is in another video in this series. But for now, I hope you've got the idea of how we can work this kind of question out by this method.